All right, technical theater friends and fans, we are back to the FBD Theater lighting tutorials. This is part six. Um, it's quite a quite a series we have going here. Uh, part six is going to focus on cueing, fun with light cues. Now, let's talk a little bit about why we have cues and what they're all about. A light cue is simply a grouping of settings for lighting instruments. So if we wanted a bunch of front light turned on, some green background lighting and a nice special light downstage right, and the fireplace turned on, for example, all of that combined for one look on stage, that would be a lighting cue. Um, in the olden days, I'm, this, I'm starting to sound old, back when I was a boy, we used to have lighting boards which only had what basically looked like submasters. Remember these things over here? Basically things that you would just slide up and down, but there would be one of these for each instrument on stage. But there would be two halves. Actually, it kind of looked like this. There'd be a half up top and a half on bottom. And the way it would work is you would set up one light cue on one side by setting these where they're supposed to go. So you'd actually have these long charts that would tell you things. So you'd set up that, then there would be a big lever called a crossfader. You would push the crossfader up, and these would be the lights that came on. Now, underneath you would have the exact same switches that controlled the exact same lights. But when the submaster, would, the submaster when the crossfader was up, then this side of the board wasn't active. So you could set your different cues. Your next light cue, you would set up all on these, and then when it kind of came time for those lights to go on a show, you'd grab that big crossfader lever, pull it all the way down, and now these settings would be up. And you would change these for the next light cue. That would happen all throughout the show. It could be hundreds of them, and you would be scurrying to make the necessary changes in each one of them. Um, it made for great looking lighting on stage, and very, very nervous and jittery lighting operators because this was hard. You had to memorize, and if you had a theater that had 90 lights, you had 90 of these suckers all stretched out in front of you that you had to either look at a chart and figure out the settings or what happened to most of us, memorize them. You know, you knew that this was coming up, so these 10 instruments had to be on 50%, these seven had to be on 20, this one had to be on 100. You'd memorize it and you would just, your hands would just sort of fly along the board, really hard. Um, our board actually has a little bit of that capability, but thankfully, we don't use it. So, because why? Because what we can do is we can just save all of those lovely things and not worry about it. So, let me come at this from two ways. The most common way you will have to worry about cues is if you are running lighting for a show or an event. In which case, the lighting designer, often me, has already put all of the lighting cues into the system. In fact, I have a script right here. It's the lighting script for Beauty and the Beast. And you'll notice it has a lot of listings. And after each one of them, there is a number in a box. Pre-show, curtain speech, curtain speech after curtain opens. You see 600 through 604. Let me just flip to a random page in the script. All right, here we go. We see that, let's see, Maurice's line, Bye Bye Bell has been circled. That's attached to a 617. Here's another one, curtain open, 618. Here's some more cues. When wolves chase Maurice off, 619. And then we have on a line, 620. So those are all light cues written into a script. So if you're the light operator, when Bye Bye Bell is spoken by Maurice, you have to set off Q617. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. One uses a, uses a key that we talked about before. It's the go to cue. It's right here. Um, now, the, it's kind of funny. Don't let, it, don't let all this confuse you because there is also a Q button over here that does something completely different. So it drives people crazy. They see that Q button and they start, and then there's a go button down here. So people go, go Q, which makes perfect sense although it doesn't work. So whenever you need to go to a queue, you actually have to press the button that says go to queue. All right? Confusing, yes, eh, is what we're stuck with, all right? So go to queue, 
If it was that, I forget what the number was now, let's say it was 617. Type it in here, 617, and press that enter button right here on the bottom. Boop. Okay. Oh, I had forgot to put this up when I turned on the board. But now when I did that, automatically the stage went to this beautiful bit of lighting. So the Beauty and the Beast light cues are still in the computer, so this came up. Um, however, we have unplugged a good number of those lights or put them away. So you won't quite see the full effect from what's on stage right now. But we can see some blue lighting has come on. Um, it's, this is probably, oh, I know what this is. This is when Maurice was walking across the front of the stage, um, starting his journey through the woods. All right, makes sense. Okay, just that easy. Now, anytime you want to go to a queue, you can do that same process. You can type in the thing and press enter. But... That would be a complete and total pain during a show. Especially for like a musical where it can have a bunch of cues. So we saw that this one starts on 600. I'll talk about why it starts on 600 in a moment. All right, let's go to the back of this sucker and see how many total we have. Well, it finishes on 727. All right, lots of cues right there, all right? so. If I didn't use any, like, 710.5s, which I probably did, that would mean there's a little over 100 cues in here, all right? 127 cues. It's a lot of cues. A lot of cues. Not the most ever, but a lot of cues. So imagine having to type in, go to queue, whatever, 127 times. You would be tired of it by the time we got to the end. So, what this board has is a sequencer. Basically, it will run the light cues in numerical order. Makes sense. And for that, we look down back over here, and that's where the go button comes in. In fact, for our light ops, this button is their best friend. It's what they use most of the time. When, it, when you press go, it will automatically advance to the next cue numerically, whatever that is. I'm on 617 now, if I press go, if the next cue in the memory is 618, which it is, it will go to it. If I didn't have any numbers in until, you know, 1205, not sure why that would happen, but if, I, but if that was the case, it would go to 1205. Okay, just that easy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull back some, I'm going to press that go button, and we'll see what happens on stage. Here I am pressing the go button, and we see it changes on stage. It takes a proper amount of time. That time is programmed in ahead of time. So as a lighting op, all I had to do was press that go. Now, say I did it at the wrong time. Oh my gosh, I did it early. What was I thinking? How would we go back to the other queue? Well, we could type in go to queue 617. That would work. Or right next to that go button, right over it I should say, is a stop back button. If you press it while a queue is changing, it'll stop the queue from changing right ever where it is. If you're already in a completed queue, if you hit back, here I go, back, look at the stage, and poof, we're back in the other queue. So that lets us go forward and backwards by one step. If you're running lights for a show, that is going to be your primary job, is pressing the go button in the correct times of the script while also watching the stage. Nothing can replace the good sense of a lighting op. And what happens to a lot of people when they're running lights, they kind of get lulled to sleep by the go button. It is easy, once you, especially once you're used to a show. But then they forget to look at the stage. And so there'll be, you know, it'll be a scene inside the castle. Um, they might have accidentally hit the button twice or not enough, and there's a woods lighting cue shining on the castle. Doesn't make any sense if the light op looked at it and checked it they would know and they would instantly fix it. It's amazing how often people just get into staring at the script. So no, if you're being a light op, you always are going to have to, the script's important, it tells you when to cue them, but your good sense and your observation is just as important. Looking at the stage, this is not right. What do I need to hit to change that? Okay? All right. Now, the next part of this is going to be writing a cue. But I'll tell you what, I think since this is already creeping up and being about 10 minutes, I'm going to stop this one here, and we'll, we'll do how you write a cue on the next. All right? Bye.